getting close here to the kickoff. I'm not going to have you predict the outcome <laughs> of this one, but uh, each of you give me the one key to the game that you think may determine this one tonight. Well, for me, Joe, I think the, the key for for Hudson is their, is their pass defense, and that's the, the thing that I think is going to be their big test tonight. I think for the Hudson Raiders, it's to uh, limit mistakes, cut uh, cut down on the penalties, have you know the the turnovers, particularly the key turnovers and drives inside the uh, inside the red zone, capitalize inside the red zone, red zone, try to come away with seven points instead of three. And I would agree with my dad, uh, the, the pass defense is going to be imperative as well. Parker Pulling will get us underway here this evening. Back deep to receive for Superior. Back about the four or five yard line. On the near side is Max Plunkett. He's a junior wide receiver. On the far side, Trey Knight. He is a senior halfback. And we are underway at NBC Spartan Park. This will be Knight from his four coming across the field. Cuts up at the 15. Tries to dart out to the outside at the 20, but he is held up and then snowed under by all the white visiting jerseys from the Raiders at the 17-yard line. And I want to add something to my uh, keys of the game, and that's it's really true for both teams. Win the battle of field position. <laughs> Time of possession is important too, but field possession even more so. And that's everything from punts and kickoff returns, you know, that type of thing. Whoever wins the battle of field position walks out of here with a win tonight. So Gunnar Johnson, they'll work out of that pistol set like the boys mentioned. Gronsky behind him. The one to watch, Sam Klein, split out wide to the far side of the field. And it's a straight keep. Johnson looking for some room, and he is converged on and tackled. No gain. It'll be second and ten. The Raiders, uh, Cole Goodbow, 6'4", 230-pound junior. He's off to an excellent start among the, amongst a host of others. Defensively, this Raider team, I mean, they shut out Eau Claire North last week. How much better can you do? Really seen some good things. Excellent penetration uh, by Goodbow. Is that correct? Goodbow, correct. So second and a 10 again. Klein split out wide to the far side. Bryce Marion out there with him. Johnson forced from the pocket, going to run. He's got a little bit of room, cuts back at the 20, out to the 25 before he's bounced backwards. So a gain of seven for Johnson on the broken play. will bring up third and three. Pretty good reaction on a broken play. He, he took some pretty big heavy hits as the linebackers and safeties converged up and sets up a, a mid-range third and three. We get into the MSBN email box here as well after this play. I got a special email that just came in. And you can email us here at NBC Spartan Complex. Very easy to do. Click on the email us link on your game tracker screen. You can let us know who you are, where you're listening from, and who you're cheering for tonight. In motion and now resetting. That was Corey Sanders. Hand off Gronsky. Hit at the oh, line of scrimmage sorry. and dropped. It's good though. No gain brings up fourth and three. Coach good ball, an excellent penetration. Well, good ball, and I talked to, to a defensive coordinator, Neil Hatfield, and he's very high on Mr. Cole Goodball. He's definitely got the size, like I said, 6'4", 230, and, uh, you know, they stopped that third and three cold, and looks like uh, it's going to be three and out for the first offensive possession for the Spartans tonight, and we'll see the Hudson Raider offense for the first time coming up. Sam Klein will punt it away. Yeah, he does everything. He's the punter. He's the place kicker. He's the leading receiver. He's a senior captain. And he kicks to Marvin and Burgess. Low line drive kick. This is going to be Burgess on the run. Avoids the first wave. Drops the football. <laughs> Superior the first one there. And it looks like they will take it over on the turnover. Well, that's talk about intangibles. And that's the biggest one. Now Hudson's saying they have it. Still no indication from the Zebras. It's on the far side of the field. They're going to have to sort it out. <laughs> Get the teams pointing in opposite directions. Well, while they sort it out on the field, I want to say hello to Lee Livermore emailing in. Lee, the class back in the late 60s, says, hey, guys, I'm back. Go Raiders. Can't wait for homecoming, but beat Superior tonight. Lee, great to hear from you again. Still don't know what ball it is. I think that Hudson is going to Somebody's retain. down. Is that Bur is Burgess? Oh, they're, st down? they're still fighting for it down there. It's Burgess and a uh, <laughs> Spartan <both> player. <laughs> and it's Burgess that comes away with it. He was tangled up down there with Chase Elder. It was, it was a scrum underneath that pile. Did Hudson retain it? I believe they did. 
Boy, Burgess took that on the run. Kind of a dangerous play to begin no, with. No, Superior has it. Excuse me, Superior has it. It is Superior football as their offense will be back on the field. Okay. First one of the game, John. Well, that, you know, it's an intangible. Not, not the way you want to start the game is uh, fumble the opening punt. Have to overcome adversity. You know, I never did see a striped shirt point in any direction. <laughs> I, yeah. So first and 10 Spartans, 9.42 left to play. Opening quarter, no score. Hudson has yet to run an offensive play. Second series here for Hudson as they'll give it on a sweep play. And uh, across the 45 to the 43 yard line comes Sanders. They gain a three on the play. And Dominic Sudenbenko, among others, coming up for his linebacker spot. Dominic, a 5'10", 220 pound senior. He's had a good opening campaign, kind of the general there in the middle, the linebacker position. Spot the ball at the 47, second and six Spartans. Johnson fakes, dumps it over the middle and it's off the hand of Zach Targi, incomplete and that'll bring up third and six. Ooh, that was almost a really nice gain. Superior, uh, you know, they had that double split, double slot. Uh, they, they get four receivers into the, <clears throat> into the route system very quick. Wants well, to say hello to Bill Rubin. And said the Rubens are home watching from North Hudson. Scott Rubin says, go Raiders, bring home a victory. This time they'll slide to Sanders to the near side of the formation. He's the slot inside Plunkett on the near side. All alone on the far side is Klein. Straight drop, forced out of the pocket, throws it up for Klein. He's got him first down and down the sideline. Stripped up and out of bounds at the Hudson 31-yard line. That's a 16-yard connection and a first down. Well, State Player of the Week runner-up Sam Klein had, what, seven or eight catches, 150-plus yards, and hit the game-winning field goal against Eau Claire Memorial. As you mentioned in your opening comments, Dad, they're gonna have to know where he is at all times, possibly double him up. He's a threat. Well, you know, they, they showed strong right, John, and he actually came back to the left. You know, they, they, their formation was, was to the right. Their quarterback, left-handed, throws the ball well. Well, Klein at 6-2, matched up that time on a corner who's only 5-9, the mismatch taken advantage of. Looking to throw again, Johnson steps up, he's gonna run. He'll gain a little bit as he falls inside the 25-yard line. That's a pickup of six. Want to say hello to Christy and Joe, saying go Hudson. They're watching from Chicago tonight and they're cheering for Kaiser Helterbrand. Christy and Joe, thank you for emailing in. Keep those emails coming in, love to hear from you wherever you are tonight and want to thank each and every one of you for spending your Friday night with us with Hudson Football and MSBN. Second and four from the Raider 25 yard line under eight and a half to play, scoreless first quarter. Handoff on the jet sweep. Trying to pick his way and getting a couple of yards before he's driven backwards with Zach Targi. I want to say hello to Autumn and Caitlin. Autumn and Caitlin from Hudson Prairie are watching from home. They say good luck Raiders. Thank you Autumn and Caitlin. Big third down coming up here. They had third and three on their previous offensive possession. The Hudson defense came up, uh, came up big and forced a punt. We'll see what happens here. You can see all the Spartans looking to the near side like getting the play, transferring it off of their wrists. Third and two. Targi in motion. Runs into his running or his quarterback, but Johnson dives ahead for another superior first down to the Hudson 20. Well, Hudson was able, or Superior was able to do what they couldn't do in their first offensive possession. That's convert a third down. Now they're inside the red zone. And the quarterback rode the, rode the running back and then it went straight ahead. Want to say hello to Chris watching from Denver, Colorado tonight, cheering on the Raiders. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Rolling near side, oh, pulling up, throwing it into the end zone. It's up for grabs, bobbled around it, and intercepted. It is Raider football. And Dominic Sudenbanko put a big hit on the superior quarterback. He was almost, almost a little bit late as he lollipopped it. Hudson had excellent coverage, kind of a meet me in the corner play and he just had too much arc on it, Dad. He threw it up there quite a, quite a ways, John, but like you said, the pressure, excellent pressure by Hudson on the quarterback. Well, both teams uh, with, a, with turnovers, turnovers early. Yep. 
Devin Dalton, the interception for the Raiders as they'll take over first and 10 from their 27-15 left to play in the opening quarter. And finally, an offensive play for the Hudson yeah. Raiders. Nothing too fancy. They run the option right. And it's Steubendick running for a first down as he kept. Gain of 13. Well, Max Steubendick, he, it's a quarterback rotation for the for the Raiders. Steubendick is, is the smaller of the two, the little more experienced. Not very big, 5'9", 150 pounds, more of the classic option quarterback. He had a very good game running against Eau Claire North last week. Marvin in motion, yeah. we get flags at the snap. <clears throat> There's your concern, John. You talked about it before the game. <clears throat> Getting those. Uh, well, this is now, wait a minute. This, this is going to be on Superior. That could have gone either way. Offside on offside. Superior. Offside. So Hudson will take it. But uh, that, that, was a, that was an issue against, uh, against North. You know, on this running offense with the counter plays and whatnot, the offensive line wants to get off the ball and, and open up those, those running lanes. And sometimes you get a little antsy. They fake to Squires, and this time dropped in the backfield is Steubendick. Racing in defensively that time, Corey Sanders, as five of these Spartan players go both ways. Excellent read by Sanders that time. He had that play snuffed out right from the get-go. Loss of three brings up second and eight. This time pitch to Marvin. Marvin turns it up at the 35, out across the 40 to the 45 yard line. That's a Hudson first down on a gain of 10. When that play is run right, which it clearly was there, and the blocking is there between Jagger Marvin and Andre Burgess, they are consistently getting eight, nine, 10, 11 yards on that pitch play. Excellent blocking on the outside, John. They turned the corner and made good lead blocks. Burgess in motion, handoff, Squires, flags fly, and this time I think it's going to go against the white. I could see it offsides from here, and so could 1,500 other people. Unfortunately, while they mark it off, I want to go into quick into the MSBN email bag. Eric Hayner is back in Hudson watching his son Toby and his Raider teammates. Eric, thank you for tuning in for the nice email. Brett Carey as well. Good luck, Hudson. Keep the momentum going. That one coming in from Brett Carey tonight. Squires the handoff, picks his way across the line, breaks a tackle out over the 45 to the 48, and that is where the pile comes to a halt. A gain of eight, brings up second and seven for the Raiders. Well, Aaron Squires very, uh, has had a very good 2016 campaign. He's kind of the, the smash mouth bigger between the, between the tackles complement to Burgess and Marvin. Burgess. In motion, takes the pitch, trying to get to the corner, and he's whipped out of bounds, shy of the first down, but into superior territory. He picks up five, maybe six, third and short coming. Well, they ran Mar Marvin to the right side last time, then they got Burgess to the left side this time. They're try really trying to establish that outside run, spread the, spread the Hudson defense out, and that's when you get uh, Squires between the tackles, maybe throw in a pass in there, and we're moving. Well, Mar Marvin made a good block that time, too, from his back position. Marvin in motion, a little movement, but everybody will reset. Marvin in motion again, handoff. Squires runs into the line and then on second effort, gets ahead and had a first down. Oh, I don't like the spot the way they're running in. It looked like he easily crossed the 45 before being driven back. First Jager Marvin, the leading rusher for the Hudson Raiders coming in with 250 yards. Aaron Squires close behind him with 236, Max Steubendick with 179. They did spot it above the, uh, beyond the 45, Joe. You were right, I, I thought he had it early in, the, in his run. So an impressive opening drive here from Hudson. Three first downs and still rolling. Now the pitch for Marvin. Looking to get to the outside. Burgess ahead of him, gives him a nice little chip block and Marvin runs out of bounds inside the 40. I believe they'll spot that at the 39 for a gain of six. Want to say hello to Big Dog and the boys. Jacob, Balt, Jacob Dalton is the man to watch. Number 36, pure raw talent. Watching from Hudson. Bring home a W. Caw, caw. That from Big Dog and the boys emailing in. Now a two receiver set here from Hudson is Newell. Slot, handoff, Squires right up the middle again. Runs through the first tackle and dives out to the 40, or down to the 37, a gain of three. 
Well, Squires against Eau Claire North and those runs was consistently getting, you know, six, seven yards a crack. Now, Superior's defense, obviously, is a step up from what North uh, brought last week. Again, Newell inside, Berg coming in motion, Burgess. We're changing the play here. This time it's Marvin in motion, handoff Squires, and it. Squires. Has it again. We'll have enough for a first down inside the 35 yard line, gain of three, maybe four, it doesn't matter as the chains will move. Well as the chain gain marches the uh, chains down the field, we want to say hello to Barry and Pam Olson, cheering for the Raiders and grandson Dan, they're tuning in from Sister Bay, if you could email us back in and tell us where exactly Sister Bay is. Again, it's Squires and Squires. Boy, just lowered the head and churned the legs all the way down to the 30, a gain of four. It's not fancy, but it works. It's, it's, it's smash mouth fundamental football. You know, it's, it's inside, outside. The offensive line is doing what it needs to do, and Hudson's got a decent drive going here. Marvin in motion. And a dropped. For a short loss is a Steubendick. Don't know if he was trying to hand that one off, but uh, Vic, you're thinking yes? I think he wanted to. But like John said, you know, you dive that fullback, John, you ride them, and then you pitch or the quarterback keeps, and it's a very basic uh, offensive attack. Looks like encroachment. It is going to be offsides on Superior, so third and six becomes a much more manageable third and one with the second offsides penalty on the Spartans. Well, Joe, we got, you know, we're 351 still to go in the first quarter, and I've already seen the intangibles. We've seen turnovers on both sides. We've seen penalties on both sides. Still scoreless, but it's affected, uh, it's affected the game so far. Marvin in motion, Squires cuts back to the left. And he's got a first down, down to the 23 yard line on the gain of two and a drive that started all the way back on their 20. John, you mentioned the whole field position game and Hudson has certainly tilted the field on with this drive. Well, the Superior Spartans were not able to capitalize on the, on the Hudson turnover, that being the fumble punt. Let's see if Hudson can capitalize on the, the Superior turnover in the end zone. Down to 3.30 left to play in the first quarter as Burgess will reset as the wing back right. Now Marvin in motion again, the handoff, or no, it's a keeper, and it's Steubendick around the right side inside the 20, spun down at the 19, a gain of four. Well, Barry Olson emails in, he says, Sister Bay is in Door County, Wisconsin. That's a lovely part of the state, particularly in the fall of the year, so. Barry, thank you for emailing in and letting me know where Sister Bay is. I'll have to get there someday. Did you just invite yourself? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Steubendick, another keep this time around the left side. Short gain on the play down to the 16. That's a gain of three. It brings up third and three for the Hudson Raiders. Looking for our first score update tonight. You can follow MSBN on Twitter. We'll have score updates coming in through in the night. 19 games on the MSBN network tonight on this Football Friday, September night. Marvin in motion, takes the pitch. He's got blockers in front of him, breaking through, missing the tackle. Marvin squirts down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, Hudson. Boy, superior defender, and I, I, I didn't catch the number. Had a nice shot at him and basically just blew through him. Marvin shook it off. I, I, I thought he was done, but he, he shook the tackle off and picked up the first down. Strong runner. The back of the ball touching the 10 yard line. So counter play Marvin. Counter. Well, we got flags flying here. Illegal procedure makes it first and goal from the 15. Well, as they mark that off and you know, the, the penalties are already adding up. And Brad Benoit emails in. Brad, a big fan of, of Hudson Raiders and MSBN broadcast. He said, is there any way next week's game could be moved to Door, to Door County? So you guys deserve to see the whole state. Said, good to see Joe back. <laughs> It, uh, I think Brad is speaking to the uh, high amount of travel we've had here in the <laughs> early part of the year. Keep Steubendick shakes one off, cuts up field, makes another miss, <laughs> kind of backs his way through a flying tackle, and eventually they whistle him down just shy of the 10 yard line. It'll be second and goal from just outside the 10. Scott Thompson emailing in. He's a Superior Spartan fan, watching on a, from a, a cool day in Superior. 
70 degrees, cool little light breeze. No ice on Lake Superior. No, not yet. Uh, enjoying the broadcast. Scott, thank you for emailing in. I think they're changing the play here again. Yes, they are. Steubendeck keeps, and the ball is loose once again. This time, I do believe Superior has it without question, boy, and oh they boy. do indeed. <laughs> Second turnover of the quarter for Hudson. Well, you know, when you're on the road, trying to beat a ranked team and turn, all, turn the ball over twice, in the first quarter, it's going to be tough. And I thought that was one of the keys to the game, too, when you're inside the red zone. Of course, Superior did the same thing in their previous drive. You know, to come to have a really good drive and, and come drove, away with nothing. Drove stuff. the ball uh, 70 yards. Yeah, exactly 70 yards. They ran about six minutes off the clock. A very impressive drive just un ends very unimpressively. First and 10 Spartans from their 10. A minute 21 left to play here in the first quarter. Johnson, hands off. Karonsky right up the middle. Tough sledding there. He's pushed backwards after a gain of maybe two. Well, I guess up to the Superior, or the Hudson defense to draw the line in the sand. If they could get Superior three and out, potentially could have some pretty good field position. Just the second carry of the quarter for Gronsky. They're leading the ball carrier this season. As the Spartans will spread things out. Klein to the far side, Plunkett to the near side. Coming across is Sweet. a target. Or Sanders, rather, Sanders across the 20, taken down at about the 22, 23 yard line. That's a first down superior. Gain of 10. Pretty well executed play. The blocking was there. Kind of caught Hudson a little bit off balance and converted the first down. In motion, Sanders. They fake. No, they do give it to him. And Able to run through for the first tackle, and actually not Sanders, but this time it's C.J. Fortune on the carry, and Fortune able to get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10, and that is where we will pick things up when we begin the second quarter. We are through one here in Superior. Your score, Hudson nothing, Superior nothing, as you watch Big Rivers Conference football. They're in the same play twice, you know, once for a 10-yard gain and once for a two-yard loss. <laughs> I'll say a shout out to Specialty Meats and Gourmet in Hudson, locally owned and operated in Hudson since 1999, specializing in game and exotic meats, as well as beef, chicken, lamb, pork, and veal. They're in the building across from Fleet Farm and Industrial, on Industrial Avenue, or Industrial Street, Industrial Street or Industrial Avenue in Hudson. That's an excellent place to go. They have a wide cheese selection of specialty meats. You can get elk there and bear and different kinds of uh, you know salmon and all kinds. It's, it's really a unique store. Stop on there over by uh, an industrial street over in Fleet Farm and a sponsor of Hudson Football and MSBN. Well, Joe, you're a Viking fan. Got I the, am uh, indeed. Uh, I know I'm in the minority when I say that around <laughs> here. <laughs> well, I, you know, I. some Packer fans just have this, I don't know if hatred is the, too strong of a word, but for Viking, I, I, I really don't. But I like to see a team, and Green Bay has had to do it, Overcome adversity. Clearly, when you lose your star starting quarterback in preseason, you're going to have to overcome adversity. And I think they're going to go into Tennessee, and the defense is going to play tough, and they're going to come out with a win. I think they should be able to sneak through in week one, but uh, long range. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Handoff. Targi sweeping right. Cuts up field across the 30. Good run. Be shy of the first down, but it'll bring up third and one, a gain of 10 for Targi. That's three times in a row, Joe, they went to that same sweep. Well, they've had precious little luck up the middle, but... Uh, sweep has been good to them. It has. And kind of that dual threat quarterback, Johnson has shown he can throw, he obviously can run. A lot of options here on third and short for Superior.
Johnson hands it off. And Gronsky will get the first down as he uh, runs uh, and then a late flag. First down out to the 36. A gain of four for Gronsky. Still waiting for some score updates to come in from MSBN Score Central, the other three games of the Big Rivers Conference tonight. Boy, if Eau Claire North's got a heck of a contest ahead of them, they got beat 45 nothing at home by Hudson. They had several key injuries, and what do you do the next? You know, already starting on three, you have to travel to Menominee. That's going to be a tough one. Want to say hello to Cat Morissette. Burgess, I said, so proud of you, Raiders. Keep fo focus. I, kn I know it was a long ride. <laughs> it was. It's been a lot of long rides early in, early in the season, but Hudson has responded well. And this one's going to be on Superior. Personal foul call on the Spartans at the end of that play. Was it a dead ball? I don't know if it was a, was it a personal. Must, they're moving the, they're moving the, the chains back. It's a personal, it should be 15. So it's third and, third and 12. Yeah, it's personal foul. Personal foul from the spot of where the uh, foul occurred there at the end of the play, or actually from the end of the play. It remains a third down. But, uh, yeah, I think they're trying to get this one right. If it's a dead yeah. ball at the end of the play, it should be a first down right. and then move it back. Right. We're kind of off to a little bit of a clunky start here early on. We had some penalties and some turnovers and whatnot. we got two good teams here I think will we'll improve. Yeah, that's not a spot foul. And uh, now they're moving the chains. So it was a first down run out to the 36. Tackle made. Flag flies. It's now first and 25. Well, I'm confused most of the time about everything, but I, okay, now I got it. There was right. a dead ball foul. Well, a great opportunity here for Hudson to uh, put the brakes on uh, what has started off to be a very impressive drive from Superior. Well, the, you know, and they're doing it, they're doing it Hudson football, you know, they're, the, the outside sweep runs with Bert, with Burgess and Marvin, and you know Squires hasn't had as much to room, run to room in the middle, but he has had some good runs and some quarterback option plays. They had a good they had a good drive going, and unfortunately, you know, coughed it up in the red zone. Yeah, that Hudson drive, 16 plays to go the 70 yards. I mean, and all on the ground. There was no hint of pass out of the Raiders on that first drive. Got our first score update of the night in Big Rivers Conference play. End of the first quarter over at. Uh, Carson Park, Eau Claire Memorial with an early 7-0 lead over the Chi High Cardinals. That's always a pretty good rivalry game, you know, Chippewa Falls. That is a rivalry. Eau Claire Memorial and Coach Chuck Reykjavik continuing to call the shots at Chippewa Falls. Been there since 1986. And Joe Labuda has been at Menominee since 89. Those two have been put a lot of years in, those respective programs. Lily and Brianna emailing in. Saying go Gussie and go Cole. So Lily and Brianna, it's good to hear from you. Keep those emails coming in. It's very easy to do as we are now about two hours away from sorting this last play out. <laughs> <laughs> I think they got it straight. I'm not sure. Well, the explanation was a lot quicker to Adam Cowles on the far side uh, than it was for Bob DeMeyer on the near side. First and a quarter of the field to go for Superior. They fake the handoff. Johnson runs into his own blocker and then gets out to about the 25. That's a gain of four, and it'll bring up second and 21. Got a good crowd here tonight on a beautiful night in Superior. We probably got, oh gosh, probably 1,500 to 2,000, I'd say. Got the Hudson Bleacher Creatures down here. It's the, the spirit chant back and forth. Rolling, stepping up, and now running, and upended. In fact, who was that tackle? That was Parker Poling. Or not Poling, rather. 46. But 
It was Pauling losing his helmet, making that tackle after a gain of three, so third and 18 for Superior. Scott Thompson emailing in saying, this is gonna be a close one, I think, and so far it's shaping up to be. This is a big third down here. If Hudson can stop him, potentially they could get some pretty good field position. Superior probably gonna to have to go to the air here. Klein to the near side, Plunkett to the far side, slots in between each. Empty backfield. Johnson straight drop, steps up, throws it deep over the middle, and is caught first down and more Plunkett on the way to the Hudson 31-yard line. Excellent pass. That was, an, that was an NFL caliber pass right where it needed to be, and they converted that third and 18. Threw it on the line. He just excellent, excellent throw. And somebody just somebody just lit a fire under the Superior fan base here. Hudson defense is going to have to draw the line in the sand. Forty to a yard connection. Johnson to Plunkett. I thought they're going to go to Klein. And deep down the field, all the way it is caught, and it is a touchdown for Superior. Sneaking out of the backfield was Corey Sanders. Two plays cover 72 yards, and the Spartans strike first with nine minutes to play in the second quarter. And the Spartans took, the Spartans took advantage of the Hudson turnover. Well, Superior ran an excellent, uh, kind of a delayed wheel route. They, they cleared that flat with Klein. Back came out of the backfield, and excellent throw. They cleared that area. Klein's kick a low line drive, but it is a good. And with nine minutes left to play in the second quarter, it is Superior seven, Hudson nothing. Well, so far so good for the Superior Spartans. Get on ahead, got, the, got a big crowd here. And I and, uh, want to go back into the MSBN email box. Want to say hello to Lucy and Layla Danielson. Lucy and Layla Danielson cheering on their cousins, Jake and Cole. They're watching from New Richmond, Wisconsin. I know we got several people, various establishments in Hudson watching. And wherever you are, thank you for spending your Friday night with us here at MSBN. If you're a Hudson Raider fan coming in, 3-0, ranked number four in the state in Division One, but you find yourself down 7-0 on the road to another ranked team, the Superior Spartans. Fourth touchdown and pass of the season for Gunnar Johnson, second on the receiving end for Corey Sanders, and boy, three for five, 88 yards passing for Johnson, who's also shown a knack for running the ball, that dual threat quarterback that tends to give the Raiders some fits from time to time. Well, Dad, you spoke about the, one of the keys to the game. That was Hudson defending the pass against Superior, and uh, Superior made him pay. Yes, they did. Like I said, they they cleared that. Uh, they cleared that would be their left flat, you know, with their with their wide re receiver, and then they they ran a wheel route with the back out of the backfield, and well executed play. Klein, the kicker, he does everything, doesn't he? Lines kick high, end over end kick, chases Marvin back to the two, straight up the middle of the field, gaining speed across the 20, 25, across there the 30, goes. still on his feet to the 40. Cuts back at midfield, and it is a race in. It will be won by Jager. Marvin, a 98 yard touchdown. And just no like play. that, it is seven to six. Marvin reminds me of his brother, Braden Marvin. They're both the same style of runner. They're not very big, but they are fast. And you give them a lane and you put green in front of them, they're gone. That is exactly what the doctor ordered for the Hudson Raiders. Especially psychologically, John. You know, you, you, you come down, you, you had, uh, you know, Hudson had third and, I don't know, 18, 18 19. And we gave it, gave that up, and to come back and, and well, hopefully tie it up here. Hilter Brand to uh, try to tie it up for Hudson. Low snap. Low snap. But Steubendick got it down, and Hilter Brand knocks it through. And 15 seconds after they fall behind, the Raiders have tied things up. 7-7 here in a Superior, 8.45 left to play in the second quarter. Well, after a scoreless first quarter here, both teams a strike. A Superior converted that huge third and 18, and they had another very successful pass play, put him in the end zone. Hudson answers right back with, what was that, Joe, a 96-yard kickoff return? 
Braden Marvin. That wow. went all the way to the two, didn't it? 98, was it? Yeah, so, somewhere in that vicinity. Let's call it 98. That sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep those emails coming in. Love to hear from you. Very easy to do. Click on the email us link in your game tracker screen. You can let us know who you are, where you're listening from, who you're cheering for tonight. I want to also thank Pier 500, the Cozy Corner, for tuning in tonight, running the games. Big, So much community support for this Hudson Raider team. And, uh, and for these broadcasts as well. And we, we have a, it's a lot of work to do this, but we have a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people uh, have approached me and really enjoy it. And we have a lot of people, uh, you know, not only locally, but abroad, grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters, former players, alumni. I know we have quite a few players out there that have played for Hudson that have gone on to college and tune in and email in. It's always great to, you know, go through this email bag and see those old names that you remember from, you know, two, three years ago and still still loyal to the program, still following it. We got ourselves a good game here, 7-7. Parker pulling the lines one down the middle of the field. This will be Plunkett from his seven yard line. Plunkett angles out to the 15, cuts through at the 20, and will be dragged down at the 26 yard line. Coming back to make the tackle for Hudson was Riley Brown. Taking a look at the MSBN network tonight, a whole host of games. Minnesota, Wisconsin, of our extensive list of uh, radio affiliates. Check them all out, including some Wisconsin ones. Rice, including the Big Rivers Conference matchup. Rice Lake taking on River Falls. Rice Lake got knocked off by uh, Chippewa Falls last week. Linda, Mickey, and Gracie and Barnes. Way to go, Hudson. Emailing in. Cat Morris, uh, Cat Morris, emailing in. Said, "Way to go, Jagger. Yay, Marvins." <laughs> And off Karonsky, big hole, cuts it out to the left across the 35, spun down at the 39, a gain of 11. That's a superior first down. Be sure to check out MSBN on Twitter as well for score know, updates. I'm, I'm a homer, but every spot so far has been given an extra yard or two to <laughs> superior tonight. I don't get it. <laughs> Sanders in motion they hand off again it's Gronsky up the middle and Gronsky will reach out to the 43 yard line so that'll get spotted close to the 45 and it'll bring up second down I think for the Superior Spartans you know you put that great drive together com converted that third and long it, 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 football is a game of momentum swings and obviously was a very dramatic swing when they were able to pull up seven and out and brought this big crowd to their feet and then Hudson turned, turned the table around them immediately with that big kickoff return. I think he's got to get back to what, what they had done right in the previous offensive possession. Second and a seven. Tarji comes in motion as the play is flagged down and illegal procedure the call on Superior. Vic, let me ask you a question. So... Superior, the last time they had the ball, went from a third and 19, third and 18, two plays, 70 yards later, they're in the end zone, yet they come out here and run, run, run. How tempted would you be just to keep airing it out here? Well, they've got a quarterback that can definitely throw the ball. I mean, that one he threw, like John said, it was just like it was shot from a gun. I mean, it was just a, they, I still think that's, I don't think they can run the ball consistently down the field. I think they've got to mix it up. Got a four receiver set here, a man in motion. They back will the throw, stepping up. Good ball's right. got him and finally gets him down. Back at the 37 yard line. That's a loss of one on the game's first sack. Excellent penetration by Goodball. Goodball had him by the legs. It was like a, a Thanksgiving turkey where you grab the wishbone there. I'd hate to be the, I'd hate to be the turkey on that one. Big defensive down for Hudson. Well, we know what happened in third and long last time. Yeah, third and 19, and they went 40-some uh, yards. Third and 12 now. As Devin Dalton back at the first down marker, directing traffic defensively here for the Raiders. And again, a whistle this time prior time to out. the snap, and a timeout taken timeout. by Superior. Stops the clock with 6.37 to play in the second quarter. Teams nodded at seven. Got a score update from Carson Park in a Big Rivers Conference matchup. Eau Claire Memorial, Chippewa Falls all nodded up seven apiece. 
That one in the second quarter. Still waiting on an update from, uh, and I'm afraid to even ask this one, Menominee at home against Eau Claire North. <laughs> and then we got Rice Lake taking on River Falls. Of course, that's one of the 19 games on the MSBN Sports Network tonight as Rice Lake Warriors defending co-champs hope to get back on the winning track this week after a tough uh, opening or last week loss to, uh, to Chippewa Falls. Bailey, Zoe, and Julia watching from St. Paul. It says, way to Huddy. So... Thanks for emailing in. Keep those emails coming in. Love to hear from you. And we got a big crowd on, on hand uh, tonight. Several Hudson people made the, made the trip. We got a lot online. On this beautiful night, Superior, Wisconsin. Very, very nice crowd. Well, the weather certainly is playing in favor. Here we go. Plunk it wide right. Empty backfield. Klein wide left coming across. They'll fake. Johnson wants to throw and down he goes. It's Goodbo good again. Two sacks in a row for the young man. Brings up fourth down and the punt unit comes on for Superior. Cole Goodbo more and more is shaping up to be the real thing. He's definitely got the size. You know, he's sitting, he's listening at 6'4", 225. Uh, excuse me, 6'4", 230 to be exact. And he moves well, and he's athletic. And as he continues to improve and work, man, he's, he's going to be the real thing. Perry brought a back in motion, you know, right, right into good ball, and good ball just folded him and took the quarterback with him. So Klein to punt it away. Line drive kick. Burgess has to back away. Now does play it on a bounce, and then slides down back at the 21-yard line. We did get an update. Menominee up 13 to nothing. With 10 minutes left in the uh, the first half against the Eau Claire North team, that's really struggled, had some injuries, and I know that uh, a lot of people have wondered and, and reached out and said some very uh, hopeful things about the big injury at, with Eau Claire North last week and tried to get some information on that. If I get some, I'll pass it along, but I, I think uh, the, situa the injury situation is, uh, is stabilized. Swing it out to Burgess near side, 25, 30, runs through a sure tackle, and then is bounced down at the 36-yard line. That's a gain of 14, a Hudson first down. That's a play we haven't seen a whole lot, but you're just you're trying to get the ball in, in the hands of Burgess and Marvin and just utilize their speed. That, that's, it, it's, it's a very it's simple a game plan. a little pass, and almost like a pitch, but it was, it, was a, it was a forward pass. But it got him out, on, like you said, it got him out on the on wide quickly. Kaiser Helterbrand at the... Uh, Quarterback position for Hudson now. Fakes the handoff, keeps it. And Helterbrand battling for yardage, spins his way out to the 39 yard line. A tough three yard run. And a lot of people very high on, on Kaiser Helterbrand, only a sophomore. And to, to, to even get on the varsity team as a sophomore, a school of Hudson sizes, it really speaks to the, uh, to the talent. And uh, he's kind of been in a, in a quarterback rotation. I think it's a it's a good one-two punch if it's done right. You know, two very different types of quarterbacks, and both have skills. They split Marvin out. Helterbrand keep picks his way up the middle and is out to about the 44-yard line. That's a gain of five. It'll bring up third and two for the Raiders. Really, really utilized his size that time. Six-one, 200 pounds, and he he put his head down, and squared his shoulders, and he got an extra couple yards out of that. Yes, he did. Steuben Dick, nope. 82, not 12 coming in. So Berg will line up wide to the near side. Newell wide to the far side. Interesting formation last time when they split Marvin out and sent Burgess in motion to the same side. Look for that later on. Handoff jet sweep will be whistled down. Procedure penalty on Hudson. It, th this is really what I was talking about. It, it, for that play to be successful, it's all predicated on precision blocking and, and you know, opening, up that, opening up that specific lane. And if, if your offensive linemen are trying to get to that spot or trying to leverage themselves too early, you're going to get that offsides. They would have picked it up. Oh, yeah. And again, again that is the fourth procedure call on Hudson tonight. And that was open. They had that wide screen set up beautifully. And Adam Cowles... What little hair he has left, he's pulling out on the sidelines over there because that's back-to-back -back penalties, and that you're absolutely right. That was that play was wide open. Well, guys, third and two has become third and twelve back at the 34-yard line. 
And a second timeout taken here by Superior. This one with 4.13 to play in the first half. So they're down to one. And we'll see if that factors into the end of the half here. Of course, we'll, at halftime, we'll talk about the remainder of uh, Hudson's schedule, including homecoming next weekend for our first <laughs> home game of the season <laughs> after four <laughs> games on the road. Yes. That's going to be the question. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've actually forgotten what our home field even looks like. But uh, after a trip to Milwaukee, trip to Madison, trip up to Superior, trip over to Eau Claire North, it's finally home. In the 2016 Farewell to Newton Field Tour begins. Built in 1961, it has served the community well, but it's onward and upward. A new facility is going to be constructed over at the high school. And uh, while the memories remain, Newton Field will not. And so come on out for the last uh, three home games, possibly some playoff games as well, and enjoy the great atmosphere. Looking, to great, looking forward to coming home next week. You can walk across the street, John. Yeah. Hilterbrand out of the gun. Steps up, looking for options. Now just running for his life and decides to dump it off. He's got his man out there short of the first down. And then a flag at the That's very end. That's a personal on Superior, by the way. That'll give him a first down. Berg was the uh, on the receiving end of what was a nine-yard gain. And I, <laughs> I hate to be a bad old man. But I am 99% sure Hudson got away with another false start on that one. <laughs> but we'll take it. Unsportsmanlike conduct well, against kind of the Spartan. That's their second 15-yarder of the half. Joe, how many, how many total penalties with, with both teams have we had in this first half? That is penalty number nine. Yeah. Five on Superior, four on Hudson. Even, it's, it's even seems like more. Well, both teams are just going to have to play better disciplined football. That's a big break for Hudson, too. It is a big break. Gives them a first down all the way down to the superior 44-yard line, 4.03 to play in the half. Helterbrand swings it out. Burgess to the 40, bounces it to the outside, 35, and ridden out of bounds from behind. They'll mark it at the 28-yard line, I believe. Nice sportsmanship that time by number 22 for the superior Spartans. Good tackle, Chase Elder. Helping Burgess up, that's what we like to see. It's all about learning the, the code of sportsmanship and Eight, definitely displayed it there. 18 yard gain down to the 26. Hey, you know what I said? Superior is getting favorable spots. Hudson just got one there. <laughs> okay. They swing it out and Marvin, unable to bring that one in. Incomplete pass brings up second and 10. Of course with Kaiser Helterbrand and he's, he's more the passing inclined quarterback and Hudson after being almost exclusively on the ground is going to the air. And that's really what Kaiser Helterbrand brings to the table is that passing element. Well, Marvin had five yards when he dropped the ball. I'm sure he probably would have picked up a first down. Yeah. He's Burgess in motion. Double pass. And now they'll swing it out. Marvin, and again, unable to bring that one in. Incomplete pass brings up third and 10. A dramatic departure offensively from what Hudson had going in the first quarter. I, I mean, uh, two, downs, two passes. You know, consistently getting yards on the ground with. You know, the, the more traditional running plays, and now they've gone all completely to the air. Big down here, third and ten. Newell split wide to the left. Burgess in motion to that side as well, and Adam Cowles is hot as he calls a timeout. <laughs> Somebody's going to hear it. I can hear him hollering from here. So third and ten, Raiders. Ball on the Superior 26 yard line. We got 347 left to play in the second quarter. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Coach Cowles is, is a patient man, but his patience just ran out. I can, <laughs> I can read, I, I, can, I can almost hear it and I can read the body language. He is not very happy and he shouldn't be. This, this, Hudson, it's been that's some sloppy play here in the last few plays. As Ice Ice Baby plays all over the PA system here at beautiful NBC. Spartan Field, we got a uh, score update. Two yard touchdown, a point after, the point after attempt missed, but the Chippewa Falls Cardinals in the battle of the, the Eau Claire region has just pulled ahead of Memorial 13 to seven. Three minutes left in the second half over at Carson Park. Carson Park, a nice place to call a game as well. Enjoyed it over there last week. 
Again, Burgess in motion to the far side, looking that way, now throwing a slant over the middle, but it was behind and nearly intercepted. Newell, the intended receiver. Fourth and 10. He and was open. And, and faked to Marvin and then, and then pumped it down the middle. He Hudson was will, open, he threw it behind him. Hudson will attempt a field goal and uh, Helterbrand puts 40. the tee down at the 34, a 44 yard attempt from the hash mark. So uh, quite an angle to this is now it'll be a 43 yard attempt. And keep in mind, Kaiser Helterbrand is only a sophomore. He's still a work in progress, now what? Again, the low snap, the uh, kick would have been short but flag prior to the snap. <laughs> oh, we've had a lot of penalties in this half. 10th one. Helterbrand seems to think it's on Hudson. He's got the team moving backwards already. Well, the illegal procedure is the call. Well, now does that change things? Yeah, it's now it was, a 48-yard attempt. That's an excellent point, Joe. That's a long kick in high school. Dad, what do you do here? Well, you call a timeout yeah, and you think, think about, about, it. about it. <laughs> Second timeout charge to Hudson. So each team with just one timeout remaining with 342 left to play in the first half. Well, both of these teams come in undefeated, both both ranked, both off to very good starts in 2016, but I have to, I have to call, call it what it is. Neither team has really lit it up on either side of the, uh, of the ball here in the first half. It's, that happens sometimes, and we could have a, a phenomenal sec second half. It's still a good game, a tight game, a close game, 7-7, seven to seven. but uh, between the penalties and the turnovers and the various <laughs> mistakes on both sides, it's... Uh, <laughs> Well, you said uh, my games usually come down yeah. to penalties, turnovers, this and mistakes, and uh, that's what the game has devolved into. <laughs> yeah. Penalties, turnovers, and mistakes. And so. again, two good teams. I think we're going to see a much better second half. That's my prediction. We'll see. Well, Helterbrand had him open. Yeah, he did. Score updates continuing to come in, and keep those emails coming in. We had such uh, such a nice bunch of emails coming in, and Hearing from people, of course, Lee Livermore let it off. I haven't heard from Lee in a while. Great to hear from him again. Very easy to do. Click on the email us link on your game tracker screen and shoot us an email here at Spartan Field as Hudson's going for it. Fourth and 15, Burgess in motion. Offense on the field rolling. Helterbrand steps up, slings it out. He's got Burgess and he's hit immediately and dropped at the 23. And the ball will go to Superior on downs. Gain of eight. Well, you're kind of in no man's land. With that penalty, it kind of backed you up too far for the kick. It was a long kick anyway. I don't know if you try a punt at that point. You don't gain, you know, you might gain 10, 15 yards punting. I think it was a good yep. choice to yep. throw a pass, even pick it up. So 335 for Superior as they start first and 10 from their 23. Menominee up 27 to nothing over North. Four minutes left in the first half over at Menominee. Pump fake and then hit as he was going to throw and ooh, ooh. hit. Ball came loose. Dominic Sinembanko came in and laid a hit. Both teams <laughs> signaling they got it. And it is it Hudson, is Hudson football. football. Big break. Parker Poling comes up off the bottom with it. Second turnover on Superior. So that battle is even two turnovers aside. Third sack of the game for the Hudson defense. So Johnson has thrown an interception. Now he loses a fumble, and Hudson, 325 to play in the half. Great field position, first and 10 from the 22. Burgess in motion. He'll take the pitch, running left to the 20. Caught and spun ahead to about the 15-yard line, a gain of seven. Little sweep left, uh, gain of what, seven, Joe? Nice little gain. Got to wonder if Hudson's going back to more of the, the, the running after they went to the air pretty heavily on their last offensive possession. 
Elterbrad remains in. They run the pitch again. Burgess left side, and he hit right at the line of scrimmage as he tried to bounce it outside. Can't pick up the number. Beautiful tackle for no gain. We're sort of back to where we started from, you know, when Hudson, before they've attempted the field goal. Well, Zach Targi on the tackle, so a loss of one brings up third and four. Marvin in motion, rolling, Helterbrand throws it, and it is intercepted at the five yard line. Corey Sanders with the interception. First and 10 Spartans from their own four, so. Boy, oh boy, this is. <laughs> well, John, what do you think? What is, what, what's the old saying about you dance with the girl that you took to the prom? I don't, I. You dance with what brought you, is that yeah. what you? <laughs> No matter how ugly she is, right? <laughs> First and four. Rolling is Johnson. Pulls up, throws over the middle. Has his man across the 15 to the 18 and hit immediately. I believe it's Plunkett on the receiving end. Richard throws a tight spiral, doesn't he? He does. You know, both of these teams have quarterbacks that, that can throw. We'll have to tally up the stats. This one is... Uh, 14-yard connection has the Spartans first and 10 from their 18. Score is 7 to 7. First downs are 7 to 7. <laughs> Penalties might be 7 to 7. <laughs> Wide open. Wide open. Sanders, and he's bounced immediately, but not until he's across the 35 to the 36. The heavy hit laid by Alec Colander. He didn't Another. exactly wrap him up there, did he? He just. Laid him out. 18 yard gain is superior gaining it in chunks in a hurry. Minute 55 to play in the half. Hudson needs a sack. Pump fake stepping up and down he goes. Good ball, the first one there and the stepping in to finish it off was Noah Bennett. Cole, Bo Cole Goodbow is just coming into his own. He, he has such a presence out there. The size is there, and you know, if he doesn't go all conference this year, I'd be shocked. Fourth sack of the night for the Hudson uh, Raider defense. Clock continues to run down to a minute 20. Second and 15, Spartans, each team with just the one timeout remaining. Looking right, throwing right, it's caught. Plunkett spins away from the first man to the 40 and then uh, dives ahead to the 42 yard line. Gain of 11. Well defensively Hudson's gotta, gotta wrap up better than that. Clock now continuing to run as time becomes an issue, we're under a minute. Third and four. And Superior just really not in any rush to get these plays off. Which, which I'm surprised, you know, with, because it does, with the stoppage of clock when moving the chains. Johnson runs to the first down sticks and he's got it out to the 47 yard line. That's a gain of five. That'll momentarily stop the clock with 23 seconds as we uh, slide the change to the head. And he turned it over again. He drops the ball and Hudson has it. <laughs> Three turnovers apiece tonight. Wow. Do we have six turnovers here in the first half? We do indeed. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, this is one of those games that you feel like you could be three touchdowns behind and you maybe should be three touchdowns ahead given all the mistakes your opponents made, but both teams can say that, and here we are, 7-7. <laughs> seven, seven. I just wonder if you're Hudson, if you just take a knee and go into halftime and just, uh, just regroup. Hilterbrand is the quarterback. He'll work out of the gun. Marvin comes across in motion. Hilterbrand steps up, 
He's across the line of scrimmage. Now he runs and he runs to the sideline and out of bounds at the 39 yard line. Gain of eight, stops the clock with 16 seconds. Of course for halftime we'll recap the first half here, add, add up the turnovers and penalties with our calculator and kind of speculate on what uh, the second half will bring. Hopefully, hopefully better play, I, th I think it's gonna be. And kind of talk some sports and thank you for joining us tonight. Straight drop, Helterbrand looking for options, dumps one off over the middle, it's intercepted again, and on the run coming back the other way is Sanders with his second interception down the sideline and forced off into the uh, Raider bench in Raider territory at the 46-yard line. Just two seconds left on the clock. Yeah, two, so Hutz, or excuse me, Superior is going to have time for one play, and yes, if you've been joining us the whole game, that is the eighth turnover here in the first half. Well, one play remains and the Hudson defense is thinking past. They've got, and the final timeout will be taken here by Superior. Well, they got to design up a Hail Mary, maybe a hook and ladder. If you're Hudson, you, drop, you, you know, you go both, you drop everybody back. back. Keep everything in front of you. This will definitely be the last play of the of the half. Two seconds. <laughs> Somebody says throw it, throw it above the light so nobody can see it. <laughs> That'll be the only thing we haven't seen here. Yeah, tonight. we've seen just about everything else. It's, it, I, I got to believe. I said this before. I'm going to say it again. I think two undefeated teams, two ranked teams, two good football teams. I think we're going to see a better second half. This, this clearly was not a good sec a first half for either team. Um, they're going to regroup, change some things up, get refocused, and I think we're going to see a good second half. Klein to the near side, Plunkett to the far side. Nobody in the backfield with Johnson. Only three men will rush for the Hudson. Hudson's safeties are on and the And actually they line. hand it off. And a big gain. Ends up being about a 15 yard gain for Targi, but that gets us to halftime as we limp to halftime here in Superior. Teams are tied at seven, along with John Wecken and Vic Wecken. My name is Joe Moore. It's great to have you along on your Friday night. It's a beautiful night here in Superior. I wish we could say the same about <laughs> some of the football that we saw in the first half. And, and it's really unfortunate because, you know, Hudson, uh, the two good teams so you know and Hudson played pretty well against a clearly outmanned Eau Claire North team last week 45 to nothing Superior had a thriller game by far the best of the four Big Rivers games and pulled out a win against a pretty good Eau Claire Memorial team 22-21 and both of these teams and it's it's been a a collection of errors whether it be turnovers whether it be penalties whether it just be mistakes you know back and forth and I think both of these coaches are really going to go into halftime here and say what in the heck was that to both of these teams change a few things up and We'll see a much better second half. And welcome back to NBC Spartan Sports Complex here in Superior, Wisconsin. You can see the teams back on the field is stretching things out before the second half. Teams are tied seven to seven in a very sloppily played first half. Joe Moore with John Wecken and Vic Wecken tonight. Joining you and glad to have you along with us. Keep sending those emails in and uh, you know guys, uh, total of 10 penalties, a total of seven turnovers. I don't, you know, I didn't hear that in the uh, prediction segment before the game guys. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I think these, these two teams are, uh, are too talented and too good to not play significantly better in the second half. So, Vic, you know, as the teams are going off to the locker room here for halftime, you said there's a couple different ways that the coaches can handle this. And one is to go in and kind of give the team the silent treatment that would send a message. And the other way you can go about it is to be very frontal, get in their face and let them know exactly what you thought of their performance the first half. But you still have a half of football to play. What does the focus have to be here for these two teams to kind of get this one back on track? Both coaches. Teams certainly gave them some coachable moments. 
you know, I'm sure that uh, the Coach Coles uh, has some very definite strategies that uh, <laughs> he talked to his young men about. And, you know, the turnovers and the penalties, I'm, I'm surprised. This is two good football teams that really did not play that well the first half, Joe. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where it, <laughs> it, I, I think both teams probably feeling fortunate right now that it's a tie ball game because I'm sure neither squad necessarily feels like they deserve to be winning this one, but uh, very happy that they're not trailing by two or three scores at this point, too. Well, it'll be interesting to see with Hudson, you know, which quarterback are they going to come back with second half? I, I assume they'll come back with the junior. Steubendick. Stu and, and run the ball. Well, I mean, they, they've, they've done both. It's kind of been a quarterback rotation for, for the most part in the first three games, and, and it was it was in the first uh, in the first half. You know, and I guess my thought on it is, you know, Hudson when they're rolling well, and, and we saw it the first offensive possession before they turned it over. You know, just really pounded it out on the ground. I think Superior has found success both running and passing. Uh, you know. To me, kind of get back to your basics and let's uh, <laughs> let's just compete on the most basic level here and see where it the bright leads spot us. for Hudson's got to be Cole Goodbout. I mean, he has he has really played himself one <laughs> fine <laughs> half of football. He, he must have two sacks, doesn't he, Joe? By himself? Yeah, two, and I you know, and I think he's had a hand in the other two. Other, and, yeah, because yeah, uh, as a team, Hudson with four sacks there in the first half. You know, offensively superior outgains Hudson 209 to 140 for the half, and you know, 130 through the air, 90 on the ground for the uh, Spartans. Hudson held to just 140 yards. You know, and. John, you've seen them throughout the season. This is a Hudson team that has been tremendous offensively, and so to kind of see them be shut down here a little bit is surprising. It, it, it really is. You know, they uh, the, 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 I call it the inside-outside connection, inside being Squires and the outside being uh, Marvin and Burgess, and then you have a quarterback option run with a little bit of passing in between. And when, when this goes and they're consistently getting 7, 8, 9, 10 yards a crack, you know, on, on the outside and then four to five on the inside, you know, maybe throw a play action in there or throw some jet sweeps and counter plays and stuff. Particularly, even on that first drive, they showed they showed they can move the ball that way and they get inside the red zone to turn it over. I think, I think the team that makes the least mistakes, the least amount of turnovers, least penalties comes out ahead here in the second half. Hudson will get it to start the second half. Line drive kick will be picked up by Sitton Bako at the 20. Weaves his way out to the 30, to the 35, and look at him rumble over the 40 to the 42-yard line before he's finally taken down. And flags fly at the end of this, so we're going to pick right up where we left off. Late flag, too. Number six, Dominic Sittabeko on the return. And I, another unsportsmanlike, and this one's on Hudson. Flag on the play. Sportsman-like ball against the Raiders. So that wipes out a, a very nice return by the upback, Dominic Sittenbako. Let him play. Well, and they pointed toward Hudson, but they've marked it off against Superior. Well, I don't know if this has been the referee's most shining moment either here, but. Uh, well, we'll see. Ball was against the Spartans. So that tacks on to what was a good return and a great opening field position here for the Raiders to start the second half. Excellent field position. Let's see if Hudson can capitalize. First and 10 from the Spartan 43 in motion. Burgess keeps Steuben back. Now a late pitch, Burgess, 40, 35, spins to the 30, fights another one off inside the 25, and finally goes down at the 23-yard line, a gain of 20. I think that's the spark Hudson needs. I, I really do. I, th I think they're going to capitalize on this and, and put up seven. I, I saw Burgess run with a bend and run with the passion there. You know, for that 15 yards tacked on, now they're approaching the red zone. He ran hard on that one. First and 10 from the 23. Handoff, no, Squires was the fake. The pitch to Marvin to the 20, to the corner of the 15, dragged out of bounds. They'll spot him at the 14-yard line, a gain of nine for Marvin. 
Well, definitely within uh, field goal range, but I, you know, they had that field goal attempt and then they ended up going for it. And you want seven out of here. Oh, they want seven. There is no doubt about that. Second and one, come on. Burgess in motion, handoff, first down, Squires. And Squires gets inside the 10, first down. It'll be first and goal, Raiders. Former Raider Andy Johnson, I believe that's the Andy Johnson that used to play for, uh, for Hudson, said go Raiders, keep the train rolling. Hashtag Raider Nation. Again, you can email us here at the booth. Very easy to do. Click on the email us link in your game tracker screen. Shoot us an email. They fake to Squires, following Squires. Stubendek inside the five, and they'll mark him at the two, a gain of seven. It'll be second and goal, Raiders. I see the Raiders playing with a focused purpose on this drive right now. I did not see that as much in the, in the first half. Well, that's a heck of a pickup there, John. You know, seven tough yards. They should make her. Looks like they're on about the two. Marvin in motion, handoff, Squires plunge. Touchdown, Hudson, two yard run for Squires and the Raiders take the lead for the first time tonight. Well, that, that was Hudson football there. Uh, you know, power football, good running, good blocking, uh, very focused, much better execution. It's all about execution. Coming off that 15 yard penalty, which originally I thought had gone against Hudson, tacked on 15 yards for a pretty decent return anyway, and Hudson strikes pay dirt here in the second half. Elter Brand's kick is good. 10 minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the third. It's 14-7 Hudson, and guys, <laughs> that was impressive. That took only five plays. Yeah, it is. I, I, you know, it, I, I would have liked to have been a mouse on the wall or a mouse on the floor. Now what? Another procedure penalty on Hudson, I believe, so we'll have to re-kick. Take that point off the board for the time being. Been one of those kind of games. Let's make it 13 to seven. We'll just have to do it again. Well, he's got the leg, the five yards, uh, insignificant from here. And this kick is good. Much ado about nothing, as the saying goes. So it is 14 to seven, 10 50 left to play in the third quarter. So now the Hudson offense has come out, done its job. Yes, it did. Well, I think that's that's good Hudson football. Primarily on the ground, good blocking, good speed, and just you know, really, uh, it just seems a, a more focused, disciplined uh, off offensive possession that time, and it resulted in seven points. Now it's up to the defense to stop Superior, get the ball back. So looking for some score updates coming in. You can check out all the scores on MSBN's. Twitter account, 19 games on the MSBN Sports Network tonight on this September 9th, Friday night. The NFL is officially opened last night with the Denver home win over Carolina. Division I college opened the week before. Football is here. School is back in session. The pennant race heating up in base, Major League Baseball. Good time of year. It's fun. Bird season opens up and it's yep. Yeah. So Parker pulling to kick it away for the Raiders. Line drive kick from the three, Plunkett. Out to the 10, 15, and nowhere to go from there. 13 yard return, Spartans ball first and 10 from their 16 yard line. Well, we got a Raider down. Not quite sure. I'm looking. Looks like he's holding his knee, John. Not sure who that uh, who that is. We'll get clarification before we announce the number. That would be number 99, Josh Josh Fry. 5'9", 225 pounds, senior defensive lineman. Of course, while we uh, wait for Josh Fry to be uh, attended to, I want to remind our viewers that next week, finally, in week five, Hudson comes home for the farewell season at historic Newton Field. 
Love to uh, have you be part of it. We only got three home games this year, with the unknown being the potential playoffs, but and I know sometimes in past years, Joe, you remember this, where we were supposed to have a home game and the opponent petitions, the next thing you know, we're going to Chippewa Falls or we're going to <laughs> Stevens Point and, you know. But then in 2014, we had Green Bay and, uh, and Appleton North both did come to Newton Field. And, and I really think, and I don't think, I know this, a lot of pressure was put on the WIA from people in Hudson saying, wait a minute, this, this has happened the last two years. We, were, we earned the right to have these games at home. And uh, next thing you know, we're, we're going on the road. And, you know, I think sometimes the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The next <laughs> and uh, in 2014, that didn't happen. So even the WIA can accidentally do something right. Well, and, you know, that's the unfortunate part about this conference. I mean, the conference itself is so spread out. And uh, just the way it's worked out is that, especially at the D1 level, you end up with Hudson kind of all alone on their end of the state here on the western side. So, you know, those issues are bound to happen. I'll tell you some other good teams, and I know we are really looking forward to this game. And, you know, 14-7 to is still a very competitive game here tonight. But uh, another western team ranked number one, I, Division 4, is it? Osceola, Division 5. That yep. they're, and, uh, boy, they're in a good one on the, uh, <laughs> on the website tonight. Oh, take, yeah. Taking on Somerset, so a good one in Osceola. Well, two excellent programs, uh, smaller smaller programs that are that are close in close proximity to Hudson, and that's Somerset and Osceola. Osceola went to state last year. Somerset's been to state, gosh, I think three or four times in the last ten years. Two very good, solid Division Four and Five football programs. Fry helped to the Hudson sideline, gets an ovation, and we will be back to the action here. First and ten Spartans. Well, John, do you think they'll come out throwing, or are they going to run the ball? And it's on the ground, and Johnson dives out and gets it back, but he loses three in the process back to the 11-yard line. Hudson almost had that. Uh... Johnson did lose two fumbles in the first half, two of the three. Spartan turnovers in the half. And his back is to the wall, second and 14, and I wonder if Hudson, Cole Goodball is gonna come from his side on the right end there. Here he comes. Throwing out Klein with his first catch of the night across the 20, stood up and pushed back. He'll be shy of the first down as they'll spot him at the 22 yard line. Gain of 12 brings up third and two. I think for the Superior Spartans, you, you find a way to get that football more into the hands of Sam Klein. He had such an outstanding game last week. Was pretty quiet during the, the, the first half. Actually, his second catch of the night, good now for 29 yards. Third and a yard. Spartans spread it out. Bronsky up the middle, he's got the first down and across the 25, falls ahead near the 28 yard line, gain a five fresh set of downs for Superior. Well, Superior with their back to the wall was able to convert that and they got a drive going there, they find themselves down by seven. Now they turn second and 13 into a first down. I noticed Superior has really had these long stretches getting plays in. I think that resulted in one of their timeout mm -hmm. calls back in the first half. Sanders comes in motion. They fake the hand up. Johnson keeps and is out across the 30 to the 32, a gain of four. Gunnar Johnson, the quarterback. Spartans leading a rusher tonight. That was his ninth carry, good for 30 yards. Option pitch, cutting back, oh my. Buried back. 
inside the 30, a loss of two, maybe three on the play, brings up another third and long. Cole Goodbow came all the Goodbow. way from his right end, pursued the play, and had, and had a, a tremendous hit from behind. He continues to just really impress. Zgronski on the carry, loses three, third and nine coming. Well, you know, third and long situation. If Hudson can stop him here, they're going to have to, got to punt it fairly deep on their own territory. Cole Landers got Klein one on one near side. Rolling this side, throws over the middle. It's intercepted by Pelling. Nice fourth, interception. Fourth turnover of the night by Superior. And once again, Hudson in great shape, starting first and 10 from the Superior 39 yard line. 8.02 he left to play in the third. Well, it, again, the, the, the turnover bug has bitten the Superior Spartans time and again tonight. And if, if Hudson can capitalize on this one to go up two scores, we've got a lot of football left to go, but they're gonna be sitting in pretty good shape. And once again, it's Steubendick in that quarterback. Receivers to both sides. Burgess in motion, handoff, Squires. Keep by Steubendick, rather, Steubendick. Will be very close to a first down as he's inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. And Steubendick has really impressed me with his running ability. You know, he, he's more the option quarterback and he's, he's the running threat. You know, whereas, whereas Kaiser Helderbrand's more of the passing threat. And, and there, that, that's how you work it. Hudson's got a good drive going. Steubendick now the leading rusher for Hudson tonight, 37 yards. Counterplay, Burgess off the left side, bounces it to the outside, inside the 20. He's got another Hudson first down, finally taken down at the 16. 13 yards for Burgess, and his Hudson offense is rolling in the second half. And Dan Smith is all smiles. He says, love it out there. He's tuning in from Indiana tonight. So, Dan, thank you for emailing in. Also want to say hello to... To Hank, tuning in. Handoff, Squires right up the middle, mm -hmm. pounds his way inside the 10, down to the nine, they'll mark him at the eight, a gain of seven for Squires. And Dad and Joe, I'm seeing a much more focused Hudson football team in the second half. Burgess in motion again, the handoff to Squires inside the five, he falls ahead, lost the ball on the way down. No, they're gonna say he was down before the ball came out. So Hudson will have it first and goal inside the five. And Hudson smelling pay dirt here. Gain of five on the play, sets up first and goal from the three. And again, Raiders picking it up in chunks on this drive. Lots of movement there. That's going to be encroachment. Yep, on Superior. Seventh penalty of the night on Superior. That's Squires it. handoff, touchdown, Hudson. And the Raiders are playing Hudson Raider power football right now, keeping it on the ground, and it is working. They're going up two scores. Second two-yard uh, run for Squires here in the quarter has the Raiders up 20 to seven. Hilter Brand knocks the extra point through and with 6.56 to play in the third quarter, your new score reads Hudson 21, Superior 7. Well, another impressive drive coming, capitalizing on a Superior turnover. And uh, now we're starting to see the Hudson Raider football team. That's 3-0, ranked number four in Division One, knocked off Arrowhead, shut out North 45 to nothing last week. Now they're starting to play Raider football. And, and the Superior uh, Spartans, and they're getting talked to down there. The, the, these, these turnovers and penalties are just killing them. They're, they're just killing them. <laughs> Principal Peg Shoemaker from the Hudson School District emailing in. She says, yes, Raiders, so proud of them. 
I think a lot of people are proud after a kind of a sloppy first half. They really turned it on here in the in the third quarter and off two scores. So Peg Shoemaker, thank you for emailing in. Keep those emails coming in. Couldn't make the trip up here to beautiful Sp NBC Spartan Field, Superior. Glad you can join us on the MSBN Sports Network tonight. Well, Vic, what's the difference you see in Hudson here in this half compared to the first? Well, <coughs> they didn't have any motion penalties. <laughs> you know, they took it, they, 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 they ran the ball, which they're good at. And they stuck to their, st stuck to doing what they do well. Pullings kick a line drive, but Hudson was off sides on the kickoff, so they'll back up to the 35 and do it again. That'll be interesting to, if Superior will uh, go to the air, you know, they're down two touchdowns. That, will they think they need to well, put well, it up? Well, I, I, think, I think they've definitely had success through the air. Their, their seven points came through the air with the big, with the big third down conversion, and then, and then the touchdown was on, was on a pass. There's plenty of time left, 6.56 to go. And Hudson 20, up 21-7, to seven, and Superior is a rattled football team right now. You can just tell. So now pulling from the 35, scoots it down the middle of the field, picked up at the 23, return this time by Drake Samarzia, and Samarzia across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Want well, to say hello to Chris Mattern, emailing in, says Go Raiders, cheering for Taylor Mattern, number seven, for the Hudson Raiders, who's six foot, 145 pounds, senior defensive back. Chris, thank you for emailing in. Six fifty to play in the third. Twenty-one-seven Raiders. Superior. This is their best field position of the half. First and ten from their thirty-three. Hand off to Sanders in motion, or Tarji rather, and Tarji. Out to the 35, that's a gain of two, brings up second and eight. Want well, to say hello to Dan and Becky Kirkpatrick, says hello from Hudson. Thanks MSBN for the, for the web stream, we love it. Go Raiders from Becky, Dan, Amber, Dave, and Pat Kirkpatrick. The whole Kirkpatrick family emailing in. Thank you for the nice email. Glad you're enjoying the broadcast. It just seems to me Superior's taking a long time to get these plays in. Sanders in motion to the far side, rolling that way. Johnson throws on the run and has his man. Sanders tiptoes up the sidelines to the midfield stripe. First down, Superior. You see, open. Gain of 15. And Dominic Sinembanko came in a, on, a, on a blitz from his middle linebacker position. That kind of opened up a, a, an opportunity, I guess. And Superior sees it. Well, say hello to Ben, watching the game. Connor Poling, so keep up the good work. Parker Poling, the rest of the Raiders get the W. That one coming in from Connor. Johnson, little quarterback draw, looks like that was designed, and boy, got to the Hudson 46, and then they got stood up and pushed back from there. A gain of four on the play. Sittenbako with the stop for Hudson. Second and six for Superior. <laughs> Throwing a little slant. Klein has it, and he's got a first down as he reaches ahead to the 38-yard line. Gain of eight will move the chains once again. Well, Superior's got a good drive going here, converting that third down, and they've, they've been able to convert third and longs a couple different times here, and now driven into Hudson territory, down by two scores. This, this is a very important drive for them, even though we do have quite a bit of football left. We're you know in the second half of the third quarter already, and Hudson's offense has really, really got it locked in. Spartans will overload the left side, the near side, the short side of the field. Now Targi in motion to the far side. Grand straight dropping. 
They set up the little screen, dumped off for Sanders down the sideline. A stiff arm will gain him a few extra yards. They'll mark him inside the 30, all the way down to the 26. Another gain of 12, another superior first down. Well, we talked about how we started to see offensively how Hudson's an undefeated football team. Now we're starting to see what Superior can do and why they've put up three wins here. They're starting to move the ball, getting into a good flow. Good flow. Gain of 13 as the Spartans first and 10 at the Raider 25 yard line. Hand off Gronsky, picks his way through the line. Down to the 21 yard line on a gain of four. Athletic director Stephanie DeVos just poked her head in here, made the trip up to Sapir. Always enjoy seeing her. She's been uh, a great partner to work with, with getting these broadcasts on, working with the, the Hudson School District and a big supporter of Hudson Athletics. Targi in motion to the far side. Johnson forced out of the pocket. Pulls it back down, tries to shrug one off, then tries to throw it away. I'm not sure how that's not grounding. I'm not either. Did it get to the line of scrimmage? He threw it into the bench. Nice catch by the bench. And guess who is uh, creating havoc in the backfield once again for Hudson? Call good ball. If he can perfect that spin move to go with that size and speed. You, could, you better figure out a way to double, if not triple team him on the end. Incomplete pass brings up third and a six for the Spartans. Ball at the Hudson 21. Another third down. Big down. And I, I, I wonder if you're in four darn territory. Well, I'll have to see. John. Yeah. Rolling right, Johnson cuts up field as a flag comes in late. Johnson's got a first down, down to the 14-yard line, gain of seven. Let's see what the penalty is. Superior has successfully run that quarterback option play yes, several times tonight. Yes, they have. It's a holding call on Superior. And so they would mark that from the spot of the foul, which we have one referee standing back at the 21 yard line. And Joe, as they mark it off, these are the kind of penalties that lose your ball games. You, you pick up a third down and all of a sudden it completely changes the dynamic. Instead of it being first and 10 at the 15 yard line, it's, what, what is it, third and, third and 17 at the 32, that's, that, that's, that's huge, especially when you're down two scores. I'm sure we'll see the ball in the air. Clock running down to 345 in the third. Targi in motion near side, Johnson swings it out to him. He's got some blockers in front of him. Targi to the 20, down to the 18, maybe the 17, that's where they'll mark him. They pick up 15, it brings up fourth and two for Superior. Well, I. Yeah, they're not even hesitating. They're going to go for it. This, this to me, is the biggest play of the game thus far. Hudson stops them here, gets possession. with uh, It'll be under three minutes to go on a, on a two-score lead. It's going to be tough. Vic, runner pass. Run. Here we go. Maybe a quarterback keeper. Hudson brought their coverage up tight, so they're not going to give up the little quick a little quick out. Fourth and two, Johnson. Gonna roll, throws, has his man. First down, Superior at the 12 yard line. Got to play by the Spartans. They had to execute with the game on the line and did it. Well, it looked like he was gonna run with it and then he just flicked that left wrist and just enough. They didn't get it by much, but they got it. Yeah, they didn't need much. Two yards. Zach. Targi on the receiving end, his second grab in uh, this game, in this drive, actually. Want to say hello to Spencer Corum, emailing in, said, nice to see the boys keeping things clean, keep up the good work, and go Raiders. Spencer Corum. Handoff Gronsky right up the middle to the 10, spun down at about the 9. Gain of 3 on the play. 
I want to say hello to Karina Turin and Sloan Boothelay, and I hope I got that name right. It's a great job, Hudson. Let's pull it through and pull it out in the second half. Shout out to our favorite offensive coach, Ted Boulay, from his number one fans. And off Goronsky trying to find a hole, and he is grabbed by Goodbow and a dropped back at the 10. Loss on the play brings up third, and we'll call it we'll call it seven. Surprised they've gone the last two uh, plays on the ground, Dan? Yes, I am, John. Well, we got, we got a Spartan player down. I think we've got a Hudson player down as well beyond that. Got two guys down. It gives us a chance to go into the MSBN email bag. Henry Reese emailing in. Said go Raiders and go Vikings. That one coming in from Henry Reese, another Viking fan. Reed Junko and Grant Mara said go Steubendick. That one from Reed and Grant. Thank you for emailing in. Nancy Johnson emailing in. Grandma and Auntie watching Parker Polling and the Raiders tuning in from River Falls tonight. And they say go Raiders. So we got a Raider fan over in River Falls. Of course, the Little Brown Jug game to conclude the 2016 season and also to conclude our last regular season home game at Historic Newton Field. Be sure to come out and check, the, check out the three regular season home games. That's Historic Newton Field, built in 61. We'll close the curtains on at the end of the 2016 season. New facility opening up at the start of the 2017 season. If you can't make it, check out the game on the MSBN Sports Network. Sam Ooston, an offensive lineman from a Superior. Elijah Rood of Hudson, those last two uh, shaking up players up and off the field. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. Chippewa Falls pulling away, 28 to seven. Over Eau Claire Memorial, looks like Chuck Reykjavik's got his Chippewa Falls Cardinals playing some good football again here in 2016. Tough start to the season, the uh, league season uh, for the old Abe's having to come up here and then uh, get the defending champions. Of course, this starting a uh, tough stretch of games for superiors. They go to Chippewa Falls next week. Johnson guns it, Klein has it, and he's in. Touchdown, superior, 10-yard strike. Makes it 21-13. Good execution. There were several gutsy plays by Superior. Hudson, Hudson had him back up into third and long situations. They con converted that fourth and two. A, a, a well-run drive, and you got to give credit slant. where credit's due. Just a quick slant. Quarterback put it right on him. Klein's got good hands. You know, Superior is having more success going through the air than on the ground. I think no joke, uh, on yeah. the ground, so, uh, Hudson has been able to contain them for the most part, but they have had some success through the air. And Klein knocks through the extra point. We've got a minute 41 left to play in the third quarter. It's now Hudson 21, Superior 14. Emails continuing to come in and keep them coming in. I want to thank everybody for spending your Friday night with us here at MSBN. And Joel's heading, heading back tonight. Got that long drive. Doing it for the been able to come up game. here for the broadcast. That's a, uh, it's a nice trip up here. To it a, is. To a great facility. Yeah, it is. It on is. A, on a gorgeous night. Oh, beautiful night. You know, and that's uh, that, that's really, um, you know, you're just so fortunate when the weather cooperates like this, you know. And I was in, in, the, in the cities earlier today, Joe, you and I both uh, both came up as, as the YMCA by the village people cranks out here in a in a very festive uh, Spartan field. Um, we had rain, you know, we, we, were, we were setting up some games over at St. Thomas Academy in different places and uh, rain and thick clouds to the west. But the further I got north on the way up here, the clouds were less and less and beautiful, beautiful night. Well, Marvin on the far side already has a 98-yard return tonight for a touchdown. That was Hudson's first score of the night. He awaits the kick on the far side, standing at the seven. Near side at about the eight is Burgess. Little pooch kick, little onside, and it goes out of bounds. A 
little trickery. This time backfires on the Spartans as Hudson will take it first and 10. They kind of gave it away, but I don't think that Hudson picked up on it. They had, they had more players on their left, their left side. I think they're hoping for an onside, hoping to pick that off. Well, it's anyone's ball game here. Well, let's see if Hudson can put on another drive. Got another Viking fan, Tim Newton, emailing in. He said he's watching the game with John, Zach, Sean, and Owen. He says, go Raiders and go Vikings. That a boy. <laughs> Hand off, Squires right up the middle, and he pounds his way across the midfield stripe and spun down uh, for a gain of eight. And I think Aaron Squires, you know, Bur Burgess... Uh, Burgess and Marvin are, are so exciting. You know, they're they're the fast the fast backs with the big pitches and the runs. But Squires gets those tough yards between the tackles, and I think that's so imperative for this Hudson offense to be at its best. Squires only five carries in the first half. That was his sixth here in the yeah. third quarter, and now number seven. No, Stubendick. The pitch back. Burgess hit in the backfield. Nowhere to go, and he'll finally be taken down. Be a loss of three on the play. Is They'll mark it at the Hudson 48-yard line. Well, that play went backwards, but, uh, you know, the pitch plays usually work, but the block, if the blocking breaks down, Superior definitely had that one red right from the get-go, and that one went backwards. So third and five, big third down play here for Hudson. Counter play, Burgess. He's got the first down, bounces it out to the left and drops the ball as he does so. And it'll be Hudson ball, but now it's close to the first down marker. Yeah, yeah he had the first down and actually fumbled the ball backwards. And they mark or signal first down for Hudson, so very fortunate <laughs> to get the first down, very fortunate to keep the football. And The counter play worked very well, though. And as they spot the ball, clock kicks back in. 27 seconds left in the uh, quarter. Steubendick gets out of the backfield and dives ahead for a gain of one. It'll be second and nine. We'll see if Hudson gets a play off here. Under 10 seconds to play in the quarter and it doesn't look like they will. Steubendick. Hustling to the line, but time will expire. We'll switch sides. We'll come back and begin the fourth quarter. Hudson leads this one at the end of three. 21-14, your score. Well, Carl Carl emails in, and he says, go Vikings, and take the Gophers with you. And then yeah. it says, go Pack, go. <laughs> of course, Joe and I are both former Gophers. And uh, the Gophers had a nice win opening weekend against, uh, against Oregon State. And, you know. I think the schedule is definitely in their favor this year. Uh, you know, the, the possibility is there. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I think uh, the uh, opportunity to have a decent season is certainly there. Oh, and, uh, my, you know, oh, my, how you U of M guys do dream. Oh, well, they, I mean, they look good. You know, it's, uh, they gonna, looked okay. You're going to wreck that too for us? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, you know what? Hey, uh, Bucky had a uh, really nice win there in Lambeau Field last week. And what a game a that was! Win. They did. It was. It was. Uh, it kind of was a game where at different times both teams tried to give it to the other, you know. But it, it's a week one game. But yeah, a, a very good win. As, the, as the, the jump around is playing here at NBC Spartan well, Wisconsin Field. Wisconsin hits a four week Ohio State, Michigan, yeah, it's, Michigan State, and Iowa. They'll, they'll, and that's that's going to be tough. <clears throat> Steubendick looking to throw down the oh. middle. He's got his man. Berg at the 15, taken down at the 13-yard line, a 33-yard connection. Nice pass. And Hudson going to the air after having great success on the ground. And if they're able to punch this one in here, they're going to go back to a two-score lead. First and 10 from the 12. That was the first passing attempt of the night by Steubendick. Yeah, really mixing it up there. He's usually the run quarterback. 
He keeps the pitch. Burgess, little stutter step inside the 10, pushed out at about the six or seven yard line. No market at the seven, a gain of five for Burgess. And a superior defensively strung that out pretty well and shifted. A, a, a back without Burgess' of speed would have been lucky to get a yard out of that. That was all done on speed. Handoff, Squires leaps over the pile inside the five, close to a Hudson first down. Buster Gilbert from Hudson emailing in, saying go Raiders and go Packers. It looks like we've started some kind of a Packer-Viking thing here. So. <laughs> okay, big uh, big third down. They're probably in, I don't know if they're four down territory here, I'd say oh, probably, definitely. yeah. Third and less than a yard. Handoff Squires, he's touchdown. got the first down and a touchdown, Hudson. Third a rushing touchdown of the night for Squires. And it's 27-14 Raiders. Well, the Squires, he had a had a, uh, a quiet first half, but he is the great, you know, between the tackle compliment to the speedy Burgess and Marvin, and he's he's having a having a good second half. Yes, he is. Looking to get some more score updates coming in. Hilterbrand's kick is good. We've got 11.05 left to play in the fourth quarter. 28-14 in favor of Hudson. Now Squires has three touchdowns here in the second half. He's carried the ball eight times for 37 yards in the half and uh, has kind of put the team on his back. Actually, it's not just him. It's, I mean, the run game yeah. has certainly found its stride here in the second half. It really has, and I think, I think they just came out refocused in the second half and because it that that was the <laughs> that was a very poor first half for, for both of these teams it just was I mean it, you can call it what it is and uh, superior but the difference in the second half is superiors continue to have some of the same problems they had in the first half specifically the penalties and the turnovers whereas Hudson has not and I think that's you know why they're sitting on a 28-14 lead Chris the superior team is the football program quick. they can score quick they, they can and they've they've uh, just a little history on the, on the superior program you know they had a, a state championship back in uh, in 1990 they had a, a runners up back back in 88 that was under the under uh, the tutelage of Tom Mustell who uh, had had a good success here after uh, having good success at Ashland really a still a person of uh, prominence in the superior area for what he was able to accomplish here some years ago. Pauline's kick, and this one will go out of bounds. Everybody looks to be having a good time here. I, I see the blaze orange over there on the left, and it's a little early for that, but as the season gets colder, it gets longer, it gets colder, we see more, <laughs> you know, I don't care if it's NFL or college or high school, you, you see that more and more, that's, that's very Midwest. So with this kick going out of bounds on the other side of the 35, Superior able to bring it out to the 35 to start this drive. Mark Gilbert and Russ Belland emailing in, tuning in from the, from the 715, cheering on the neighborhood boys, Devin and Jacob. Let's go, boys, and all your hard work pays off. Come on, young men. That one coming in from Mark and Russ. Thank you for tuning in, emailing in. A lot of great emails tonight from here, there, and everywhere. And I think Superior has to strike Spader here. We're in the fourth quarter, down by two scores. Pretty good starting field position. Looking to throw, slings it out, plunk it on the catch. Good pursuit will bring him down at the 44-yard line, a gain of nine for Plunkett. Fourth reception of the night for Plunkett. Klein has four, Sanders has four. <laughs> and Barry Olson emails in, he says, just to end the Packers, the Vikings-Packers controversy, he says, go Bears. <laughs> I think the Bears are set for their a five or six win season. Well, maybe not. John Fox is a good coach. 
but Jay Cutler is not uh, not a winner. That's a that's a topic for another day's conversation anyway. Targi in motion. Little quarterback draw Johnson. Spins ahead. He's got the first down as he dives out to the 47-yard line, a gain of three. He has had good success with that quarterback run all night. Yes, yeah. He really has. Kevaloski on the tackle. That's a football name. I like that. Spurns again taking their time getting a play called. Johnson to throw, look out, and taken down. This time Noah Bennett the first one to him. Kavaloski there to help finish it off, as was Isaac Schindler. And it appeared to me they were so worried about good bow, and with good reason on the other side, Hudson was able to break through on the, on the right. Fifth sack for the Raider defense tonight is hustling to get off the field is Jake Danielson. Second and 15 superior, under nine and a half to play in this one. Johnson quick throw, he's got Plunkett, and Plunkett is hit by Colander oh. immediately. Gain of five on the play, brings up third and 10. And you got to think here you're in four down territory. We're under nine minutes to go down by two scores at, at this stage of the game and this, this position on the field. Now the referee is really taking their time getting the ball the, set. They've been, have, they've been taking their time all night. We'll be to eight and a half left in the game by the time this one gets snapped. Targi in motion. Rolling. Johnson throws on the run and Targi drops it. And it'll be fourth and nine. Good throw on the run too. I think he was running before he caught the ball. And, and, and I, I think Hudson would have stopped him bef bef before getting the first down, but it would have been close. Yes, it would have. Well, that's just the third incomplete pass Johnson's thrown tonight. Now he has thrown two to us, so that's pleasant, but hey, 15 out of 20, the young man's having a nice night throwing the ball. Fourth and nine, Superior. Targi in motion. Again, rolling that way. Johnson throws and incomplete, and Hudson will take over on downs. Well, that was a huge stop. Very big stop, big stop. Because because Superior has has converted several uh, third downs, you know, big third downs, and then they had that big fourth and, and two conversion there on, on their score earlier in the half. But uh, 821 to go, sitting on a two touchdown lead with the ball in Superior territory. It's looking pretty good. Steuben Dick back in at quarterback. He has been the quarterback this entire second half for Hudson. As they have turned to the run game in spades here in the second half, just one pass, and that was a good for a 32-yard connection. Burgess in motion. He'll take the pitch. 45-40 and runs out of bounds into the Spartan bench. They yeah. could... They can get seven or eight yards on that play all night. With pick, blocking like that. They pick up 12 on that one as the chains will move on the far side. Burgess is quick. Burgess and Marvin are, are two quick runners. Not big, but very quick. Hand off Squires right up the middle and Squires is gonna have another Hudson first down before he's finally taken down at the 23 yard line. Aaron That's another Squires gain of 12. Ran hard, ran hard. I think for Hudson the first half is a memory. They, they, they made the changes, they, they, they refocused uh, what they needed to in the, in, the, uh, in the second half and they're playing like the number four ranked team right now in division one. Coach Coles uh, got his message across at halftime. 
Hand off, Squires right up the middle, huge hole. Squires to the 10 and spun down at the seven yard line, a gain of 16. You know, it's, it's, a, it's that one two punch because you gotta, do, you gotta defend the ends against the speed guys. You gotta defend the option. And then, then you, you know. Then yep. you throw the counter on top yeah. of that. Yep. Burgess in motion, they give it off. Squires inside the five, spins down to the two yard Squires line, a gain of five, it'll be second and goal. And of course next week, back home, as like we said, and looming, a showdown with the always tough Menominee Mustangs, also ranked in Division Two. And we get a flag. Offsides on Superior will move it half the distance to the goal line. So that'll bring up second and goal. The ball rests just inside the two. When Spartans will look back and go, really, nine penalties? It seems like more. And a touchdown Fires run, number four on touchdown. the evening, all in the second half. Aaron Squires from two yards out. And Squires is having one heck of a night. And almost exclusively in the second half. As Wayne Larrabee says, there's the dagger. Is that what he says? <laughs> the da yeah, the dagger. Well, you never know. You, you know, you, you, 21 you, points. Yep. Yeah. You would think so. Seven minutes. Walter Brand's kick is good. We've got 7.13 left to play in the ball game. It is now Hudson 35 and Superior 14. And, you know, I think this was the performance maybe I was expecting yeah. out of Hudson at the start of the night. Uh, boy, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Since halftime, the score is 28 to 7 Hudson. I don't think I would have expected domination to that degree. Well, it, it, it's, it started with the ground. The defense is, has uh, definitely played better, although Superior did have a couple good sustained drives, particularly success through the air. But offensively, Hudson Raider football, in my opinion, is successful when they play ground oriented power football. And they did here in the second half, and it's, it's, it's gone very well. And they're, you know, seven minutes and 13 seconds from going 4-0, maintaining that ranking, and heading back home to face Menominee next week. And that will be a battle of unbeatens in the conference. Of course, Menominee losing week one. They've been perfect since, however. And now they're playing North, who we shut out last week. But, uh, you know, early in the year, John, it looked like Menominee, the defense maybe not quite what we've experienced in years past. They had a, had a tendency to give up some points and bunches this year. Yes, yes they have. A booming kick's going to chase Plunkett to the near side. He'll grab it at the 10 to the 20. Picks his way out to the 25, and that's where he's converged upon. Out to the 27, 28-yard line. Of course, you can catch every Hudson game on the MSBN Sports Network, still developing the site for it's exclusively Hudson, HudsonBroadcast.com, where we're going to feature exclusive Hudson content. Of course, when football season's done, we'll transition over. That's a ways off, but something to think about. Basketball and ex uh, extensive schedule, boys and girls hockey. Of course, the Hudson Raiders coming off a uh, uh, runner-up in the state championship game of the boys hockey. But now all the focus is on football. Johnson forced out of the pocket, dumps it off. And scampering out to the 42 yard line is Trey Knight. If you're a superior, you, 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 got, you got to work the sidelines, you got to get the first down. The, in high school football, the clock stops with the movement of chains. You got to utilize in the most efficient manner possible the limited uh, time that you have to work with to make up this 21 point deficit because the window for opportunity is closing fast to come back.
Johnson under duress, has to throw that one away into the Hudson bench. Good ball was uh, in the vicinity as was Noah Bennett. Noah Bennett put on good pressure. And I think particularly in the second half, Hudson has pressured uh, Superior very well. Yes, they have. Incomplete pass stops the clock with 6.31 left to play here in the fourth. Raiders with their largest lead of the evening, 35-14. Johnson swings it out. It's Gronsky on the reception. Gronsky just can't evade all the white jerseys in pursuit. Give them a couple on the uh, pitch and catch. It'll bring up third and eight. And if you're the Hudson Raiders, you want to keep the ball carrier in bounds. Keep that clock running. Right now it is the enemy of the Superior Spartans and it is the friend as it continues to kick down of the Hudson Raiders sitting on this 21 point lead. And again, taking some time to get everybody on the same page here on, with the play. Good 15 seconds ran off. Boy, pump fake and then spun down. Good ball again. Oh, good, good ball. Sixth sack of the night for Hudson brings up fourth and let's call it 10. Offense obviously staying on the field here for Superior. Well, they've converted some fourth downs here in this game before. They're unable to do this. I think Hudson's able to possibly potentially run it out. RG in motion to the far side, rolling that way. Johnson throws, and it is intercepted, taken away by Dalton, his second pick of the night. Dalton, as a flag comes in behind the return, Dalton back into superior territory. Boy, he just went up and took that one away from the receiver. That was a beautiful interception. Yep. He was up in the air. Would have been a first down had that gone the other way. And Superior really forced to go to the air on, 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 on fourth and long. We've got a block in the back on Hudson during the return. Well, as they sort it out here, I just want to go on to some early audience returns. I've always kind of interested in where some of the audience members are coming from. A lot of, a lot of people from Wisconsin, uh, several from Minnesota as well. We also got, we also got people checking in from Georgia, California, South Carolina, Washington, Iowa, Illinois, North Dakota, New Jersey. Canada, Denmark, Great Britain, uh, the Netherlands, Amsterdam. Worldwide audience. Worldwide. Thank you each and every one for tuning in. And I know a lot of Hudson fans, probably some Superior fans on as well, following this team as they look to go to 4-0 tonight. That is the fifth takeaway for the Raiders tonight. They've got three interceptions, a couple fumble recoveries as the handoff goes to Squires. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Four. Able to gain two on the play. Right now, if you're, if you're Hudson, you, you use clock. You don't do anything too fancy. You avoid the turnover. Possibly even get some of your second team guys in there so you can get them some game action sitting on a 21-point lead. Yeah, the wingbacks are the second string guys. Cole Danielson near side, Daniel Olson now wing back to the right. Steubendick still the quarterback. Here's right. Danielson on the counter play, and Danielson out to about the 40 yard line, give him a five on the carry. Sets up third and three for the Raiders. Of course, Cole Danielson, another one of uh, just a handful of sophomores on good looking back 5 10 190 pounds he had a touchdown against uh, greenfield in week 1 danielson out riley brown now wing back right squire still the fullback and he has carried the bulk of it 13 carries here in the second half for squires four have resulted in touchdowns Handoff, Brown sweeping left, cuts back first down. Now he's into 
Spartan territory and taken down at the 40 yard line, a gain of 20. Well, Vic, you're just a week behind me as far as seeing Hudson live and in person. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, they're very impressive in the second half. You know, they played their game like John talks about. Their, their game is to run the ball, you know, ride that fullback, give it to the fullback, ride the fullback and pitch it, ride the fullback and keep it. Uh, they were true to themselves in the second half. And off and Carranza, the fullback. Dives ahead for a yard to the 39. Clock continuing to run. We're down to two minutes and 50 seconds left. I want to say hello to Kathy. She's a fan from Concord, Massachusetts. So enjoying some Midwest high school football pure entertainment. That one coming in from Kathy. Glad we could bring this to you out on the, uh, on the East Coast. Kay emailing in. Said, go Raiders. Keep blocking uh, Trevor Reimer, 74. From Dad, Grandma, and Auntie Kay. And yeah, Hudson will pick up five easy yards on the offsides. Penalty number 10 on Superior tonight. You know, in that last email, John, that's a, just, you know, I, they so often go overlooked, the offensive line. I mean, yeah, they can absolutely. sit here and say how great Burgess and Marvin mm -hmm. and Squires have been tonight. But, uh, hey, from left to right, Jack Berg, Logan Nelson, Trevor Reimer, Tyrell Busby, Devin Paschke. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And it, particularly with Hudson being such a you know a ground-based team, and in the second half, it just all came together. And it starts all starts with the offensive line. Danielson on the jet sweep cuts it back. He's got a first down, and then some stays on his feet as he spins around, and he's going to be taken down near the ten. And he's a junior, is that right? Sophomore. Sophomore. Cole Danielson is a. It's a sophomore. 5'10", 190-pound sophomore. Well, the Raiders called for a hold, wiping That's out a 24-yard run by Danielson. It will remain second down, but they'll march it back 10 yards from the spot of the Good foul, time. so it'll be second and 14 back at the 44-yard line when all is said and done. Minute 56 left to play. Hudson comfortably leading this one 35-14. See if we can get some uh, score updates. Looks like Chippewa Falls is going to pull out another win. They'll go to 2-0 in conference. Menominee's winning handedly at home against North. They'll go 2-0. Looks like Hudson's going to come out of here with the win. They'll go 2-0. Rice Lake uh, was ahead against River Falls, but they've already had a loss. So, you know, conference season is here, two <laughs> weeks in. Got some good games ahead of us. Hand off, Carranza, ooh, tripped up as he was uh, crossing the line of scrimmage. Gain of three. And a timeout, first of the half taken by Superior. As Hudson faces third and 12. You know, yeah, you mentioned conference play. This is just week two. It's kind of like that piece of clay just starting to take shape, the conference races. Well, it is, you know, and, and I would say last year, from top to bottom, I, you know, River Falls and Oakland North are, are clearly programs that are struggling. But Rice Lake, Chippewa Falls, Eau Claire Memorial, Menominee were four very, very good football teams. You know, we, we only won two games, and 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 we were not. I, I don't. We were not a bad football team last year. Uh, we, we, we had more losses than wins. We had more losses last year than the four previous years combined in, in conference. But I but I will always say that the 2015 team was a better football team than that record indicated. And those juniors, the, the juniors, the seniors who were juniors last year obviously have come into their own. 32 seniors. Yeah. Minute and a half left, third and 12, and um, movement on the line, oops. When you are uh, as big as a guard is, 5'10", 210, you will not go unnoticed with a flinch on the line. <laughs> and that, penalty number seven on Hudson. Actually, penalty number eight if you throw in the kickoff out of bounds.
So third and 17 Raiders. They hand it off, Carranza fumbles the ball ahead. It's picked up by the Spartans. And they'll have it first and 10 from their 42 yard line. Fumble recovery by Corey Sanders. Sanders, one of five Spartan players to play both ways. Well, last minute 24 to go as we approach 9.30 here tonight. Each team now with five turnovers on the evening. That is not a stat to be proud of. No, there's definitely some improvement, particularly that first half. I mean, it's, they're going to watch a film on that, and it's almost like a, a sitcom. Handoff, sweep. And I think it's Sanders. For a gain of five, out to the 47. Oh, it's Trey Knight getting the carry, his second of the night. Getting some of that second string defense in there now too, see, John and Vic. is still in there, but got some different people on the <coughs> on the corners and crowd starting to file out here. Excellent crowd tonight. I'd say probably that, were full. I'd say probably in that two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. High snap, Johnson with time this time, now gonna take off and just lowers his shoulder into the tackler, Tanner Gray. Gain of four for Johnson, brings up third and one. 22 and counting. Final snap of this one. Johnson hands it off. Knight trying to sweep. Is taken down uh, close to a first down, but the clock has hit triple zeros, and the Hudson Raiders remain perfect in the 2016 season as they defeat the Superior Spartans tonight by a final score of a 35 to 14. Well, a good performance in the second half by the Hudson Raiders. It, Excellent. It, it really was. Um, they got back to playing power football, limited the mistakes, limited the turnovers, came out much more focused, much more disciplined. Superior continued to have problems. Defensively, Hudson got uh, uh, consistent pressure on the quarterback, shut down some of the, uh, the, the passing that they had given up in, in the first half. And you could just see on that opening drive, you know, it was, it was right after that 15-yard personal penalty, uh, personal conduct penalty that went against Superior. You saw a refocused Hudson team refocused on the ground and they scored there and it was it was uh, smooth sailing from there